Hallyu refers to the global popularity of South Korea's cultural economy exporting pop culture, entertainment, music, etc. It means the Korean wave, which has become a global phenomenon, spreading to people of all races and ages. Thousands of fans will wait days to get front row seats to see the music artists which are known as idols and spend hundreds of dollars on goods produced by their idols, but does anyone know the effect of South Korean music? To be more specific, the effect it has had on South Korea's conservative culture and social growth. The only type of music that was created in South Korea before the Hallyu Wave was traditional and trot-themed from the early 1950s. Traditional music consisted of South Korean instruments such as the Jing, Queen Rui, Buk, and Jenggu while trot music had almost an opera house sound but had instruments. The lyrics of these trot songs mainly focused on South and North Korean leaders because of tense relations with North Korea at the time. After the Korean War, South Korea became unstable, and one of the poorest countries at the time leading a South Korean general named Park Chung-hee to become South Korea's dictator in 1961. Park Chung-hee was very adamant about enforcing cultural conservatism, so much so that he had South Korean police patrolled the streets with school rulers performing snap inspections on South Korean citizens to ensure that men's hair wasn't too long and that women's skirts weren't too short. In 1975, Park Chung-hee established the Korean Arts and Culture Ethics Council, giving the government the power to oversee the censorship of all broadcasts, performances, and audio recordings. His dictatorship ended in 1979 with his assassination making Chun Doo Won, who was ruling as an unelected coup leader from December 1979 to September 1980 to become the new dictator. Chun Doo Won decided to close all of the commercial television stations and licensed only two state channels, the Korean Broadcasting System and Munwa Broadcasting Corporation. At the time the underground music scene had grown large with a band called Ad4, which was formed by Shin Young Hyeon, who is known as South Korea's godfather of rock and other artists such as the groups He6 and Ki Bros who are known for their hit song, Let's Go to the Beach. Due to the strict censorship, none of the music was able to grow and become mainstream, but it still became larger with more and more artists breaking out. When South Korea was finally democratized in 1987, broadcasting stations continued to be very conservative only broadcasting what the now conservative culture saw fit to appeal towards more viewers. Until Sotajian Boys, a rock and hip-hop group, consisting of Young Hun Chol, Ying Hun Suk, and Lee Juno debuted in 1992 with Nonareo, which set the lowest rating record from the jury as Nonareo was first performed on a talent show. Even though the rating was the worst in South Korean history, the album reached a skyrocketing 1.6 million copies sold, and Sotajian Boys gained much attention from the youth audience because they were the first artists able to break out of the underground scene with controversial lyrics and unique dance moves, unlike anything they had ever been exposed to. The lyrics specifically talked about love and teen angst, which led many broadcasting shows to deny their performance. Many conservative South Koreans who grew up with leaders such as Park Chung-hee and Chun Doo, one accused the group of brainwashing the youth, and this resulted in many fans sending hate towards these people. The underground scene began to gain more attention as Young Hun Chol who formed So and Boys was a former rock artist with the groups and all which was huge underground. Young Hun Chol set new fashion trends and broke gender norms in South Korea growing his hair out, wearing skirts, and so on but not because it looked good. In an interview he said he had wanted to break the conservative barriers thus leading many fans to follow in his footsteps. In 1994 Soteji and Boys released Classroom Idea, which criticized the South Korean education system's immense pressure on students to succeed academically on exams with the lyrics
The song was criticized for backward masking satanic messages. By then Sotagi and Boys were known for their unique messages within their music. And then came their next release in 1995 of Come Back Home leading many runaway teens to return home in regret of the times that directly criticized the Korean government saying it. Regret of the Times was nearly banned by the Korean Performance Ethics Committee for having such lyrics and fans were not pleased causing many protests to break out and the nation's censorship laws were soon abolished in 1996. The group later disbanded that year which left the general public in utter panic seeing fans chase after the van they left in after the announcement of their disbandment and crying on the streets. So Taeji and Boys were revolutionary for South Korea's entertainment industry and introduced South Korea to the underground scene and many other artists to debut with similar music like So Taeji and Boys. This was known as the start of modern Korean pop music spawning artists like H.O.T., Park Jin Young, S.E.S., Shinwa, and many more. These artists weren't shy from controversial lyrics as H.O.T. came out in 1999 with the song, Aya, which talked about the fire that killed many kindergarten students as a result of negligent staff that locked the children in the classrooms. Today Korean pop artists like BTS, TWICE, Hyuna, NCT 127, and so on can bring in an estimated $5 billion according to a report published in the Korea Creative Content Agency to South Korea in 2017. Global groups like BTS can make an estimated $57 million per year making South Korean entertainment a multi-billion dollar industry boosting the South Korean economy and South Korea's social growth. Many South Koreans have stated how proud they are with groups like BTS, TWICE, NCT 127, representing them globally in the entertainment industry. Those groups spread South Korean culture across the world which results in many fans traveling to South Korea and some even becoming residents because of Korean pop music. Many females also have a strong presence in the underground scene creating a wide variety of music such as Zifika with her hit song, My Ego and one of the most notable, Lehi who is able to successfully break out of the underground scene and become a major Korean R&B artist, collaborating with many Korean pop idols such as B.I. of Icon, in her song No One which talks about being unable to find someone to call your safe place. One artist sticks out above others as Bui combined rap and opera house sounds in his song Atacity which is a self-lathing song that many artists back before C.O. Teji and boys wouldn't think about even making as it's labeled selfish. This makes the number of international visitors in South Korea increased by 11.92 million from 2000 to 2016 when the Hallyu wave finally reached international fans. Songs produced by current groups now tend to mainly focus on the youth as groups like Stray Kids and their song, Gone Days, which implies that this new generation doesn't fit with the old generation. Let the youth be themselves. The underground scene has become more active with many artists debuting as idols but many continuing to make punk rock music and rap music, although being overshadowed by Korean pop groups. Some underground artists like Keith Ape sign with labels and become big overseas making hits such as at Gma which has introduced South Korea to a lot of American music. South Korean culture does consist of conservative norms and the broadcasting stations still have regulations to follow, but otherwise, the South Korean conservatism established by Park Chung-hee and Chun Doo-won has been re-established giving people new beliefs and allowing broadcasting stations to air performances containing more variety.